I don't know County Mayo. I eat mayo. I'm never gonna find out who that was or what the circumstances were. Was it a loving relationship and a family member or was it something a little bit more cruel and, you know, historic? Health predisposition. I'm a little worried about that one. Slightly. Hello, it is me. I am here in IRL form. This is the, I mean, I, this is me. That's all there is to see. We're here for a DNA test result. I did one. No, I don't really know why I did it. I guess it was just curiosity. I didn't have a, a reason to do it. This is my computer screen. 23andMe have this wonderful service. It's This is not a sponsored stream or anything, but it's, you know, they did a good service, so I'm happy with it. Where they, you have to spit into a little vial and then they'll send it off, go through all the analytical data pieces, and then come back with a million data. Apparently I have 1,462 relatives. Where are they? I thought I had three. I have three in-person family members, let alone 1,462. These are mostly very distant cousins. DarylFakeName.exe. That's me. Don't look me up on Facebook, because it doesn't exist. Good to know, though. I am, in fact, 100%. I'm 100% human. Or 100% existent? This is going to be pretty standard. It makes sense. Look at that. I'm 94.3% European. Is that a surprise? No. It's actually going to be interesting, because all the other YouTubers and people I've seen do these DNA results are from America. And like, I ain't got a single shade of the United States on this map. I'm all, I'm all lovely British European. That's me. I wasn't surprised by any of this by the means. It's more the smaller details. Like I've got a good chunk, different shades of African in me. How would you know? How? I wouldn't have worked these things out. So 64.6% .6 British and Irish. Makes sense. Everybody I know in my family, that's not true. Everyone I know on my mum's side of the family are all pretty British. Like, we have relatives that uh, commuted to Australia. I don't think we have any in America, so like, we're fairly British. It's a British house. But with that in mind, then let's look at the British and Irish part. Does it go into much more details? Oh, yes, this is what I associate with British water. Daryl, your DNA suggests that 64.6% .6 of your ancestry is British and Irish, which makes sense. Actually, that's a lot less than I was it? No, no. The British Isles have been continuously occupied by humans for the last 11,000 years, but more recently, the people of the Isles have left their genetic fingerprints around the world, following centuries of nautical exploration, colonization, and immigration. Yeah, I don't get to know much about British history. We've kind of half censored it. In the early 20th century, the Republic of Ireland won its dependence from the United Kingdom, but the people of these nations share a common genetic heritage rooted largely in Celtic, Anglo-Saxon, and Viking migrations from Northwestern Europe. I'd love to see what my connections are to the Vikings. The Vikings did come here. They came into the city I live in now, now. although I didn't... I assume my ancestors didn't live here because none of my ancestors lived here now. It's just me that commuted to university where I live. In the last 200 years, your ancestors may have lived in the following locations. We found evidence of your recent ancestry in the following regions. Darker regions represent places where you have DNA in common with more people who report ancestry from that particular region. Because these results reflect the ancestries of individuals currently in our reference database, expect to see your results change over time as that database grows. So, highly likely match. The United Kingdom has 165 administrative regions, and we found the strongest evidence of your ancestry in the following 10 regions. Greater London, Glasgow? Interesting. I have no relatives in Scotland that I know of. I, I mean, every relative I know of is either in London, maybe Bristol, and that's it. Like, other than, yeah, other than the places I've lived. So, it's really interesting, because I don't know anyone. I just don't know my, my genetic history. Because that's actually a point. My, the history of my family, personally, goes back two generations, and then we don't know. My nan was, I believe, adopted, or put in an, maybe not an orphanage, but she was up for adoption. So she was completely severed from the relationship of at least her dad. She doesn't know who her dad is, even now, trying to find him. Um, I don't know exactly what's going on with her mum, but it's like, it's a complete severance gap where it's like we've only just started this new line knowing the history of it all. So it's very interesting. Uh, Merseyside is interesting. 
Yeah, okay, that's the Liverpool area and a little bit more Manchester. Interesting, so I've got like a full selection on the Western Front. Tyne and where? Where's that? Newcastle, interesting. That uh, must be my, my Scottish friends. Belfast, yeah, okay, center of Ireland. It's in, like, I can only ever say it's interesting because I'm never gonna find these people. This goes way back, like, a thousand years. Maybe, maybe only like 200. It definitely goes back to the 1850s, and then I think it goes beyond that to like the 1600s, so what's that? 400 years? That's pretty intense. So like, I don't, I just don't know any of this. Ireland has 26 administrative regions, and we found the strongest evidence of the ancestry in the following 10. I don't know County Mayo. I eat mayo, but, and you know, I've looked at a cork once, never really popped them out the bottle before, but you know, I've sung a limerick, but I don't know these places. I apologize, my education didn't tell me about Donegal. I'm apparently 3% French and German, 3.7% somewhere in that region, they don't actually know the details. Uh, what is interesting is I always believed, or I, I'm pretty sure I believe, my dad is partially Italian. So this Southern European 22% Italian part comes out from there. There's a little bit of Italian on my mum's side too. I don't know how, it's a distant thing, it's not recent at all. Um, my mum's side believes that we are in Sicily, the, like the, or from, no, from Maltese, which is like near Sicily, at the very like tip of the boot on like an island over there, but they weren't too sure. Um, I've encouraged a handful of my family members to try and take one of these DNA tests and we can work that out. What else do we have? We have Sub-Sahara African, 3.6%, 2.8% West African, Nigerian, Ghan Ghanaian, Liberian and Sierra Leonean. Interest oh, that's very small. It's mostly Nigerian. 2% Nigerian. I'm never going to find out who that was or what the circumstances were. Was it a loving relationship and a family member or was it something a little bit more cruel and, you know, historic? I'll never know. Um, and then the rest are very small numbers. I'm 2.2% Egyptian. Interesting. That's at least now a, a country I know a lot more details about. I learned that a little bit in English history, or like history in English. Interesting. That's, I mean, yeah, again, I don't know if that means I was one of the guys who, well, not me specifically, but an ancestor who built the pyramid, or pointed and told people to build the pyramid, or just a merchant. This is the really interesting stuff. Your ancestry timeline. How many generations ago was your most recent ancestor for each population? That doesn't sound that cool, but when I show you this, it looks a bit more interesting. It can dictate and predict, or not predict, tell you where your ancestors were in certain decades. Uh, like where they're from, which is really interesting because I would have assumed this would be 1970 to 1730, eight generations, I guess, eight generations, I was imagining all of that would be British, maybe, or maybe a little bit, of, and then Italian on the other side. You always hear, oh, I'm half this and half that, you know, you always think, okay, two things, two brands, two countries, that's it. But this is not the case, which is really, really interesting. So, only since 1940 was we British, was we, you most likely had a parent or grandparent who was 100% British and Irish. This per was person was likely born between 1940 and 1970. Interesting, 1970 is the year my mum was born. So pretty much on the nose, this is covering my nan and granddad. One of them. Don't I have two? Don't I have two? Oh, oh, interesting. Either way, that's a thought. So like, during my, my granddad was born 19... Uh... He was like 1940, I think. That's literally my granddad's. Oh, and to my mom, yeah. My nan was born 1945. She was born up just as the war finished. A real boomer, a real baby boomer. And then my granddad was like five years old during it. So, where they were before. Moving on from that, before the 1940s, again, just one bar. I, I would expect this to be two, you know? Granddad, grandma, great granddad, great nan. Great granddad, great, you know, that should be four people being represented in entity. Maybe they're all Italian. I guess that makes sense if they think, if my mum thinks they're Maltese and my dad is pretty Italian, I guess that makes sense. From 1880 to 1940. I can't even fathom that. 60 years. 
Longer, more time spent in Italy than in Britain. Interesting. 60 years in Italy. And then before that, to a time I can't even really process between... Oh, it's split. No, it's not. There's a gap. There's a gap from... I thought this was actually 1850 to 1880. No idea what's going on there. For all... Eight? Eight? Eight people that it should follow. All of four grandparents' parents. All four of... All eight of the parents of my four grandparents. And then before that. Interesting. And then from 1850 to all the way to 1760. African... Although, no, never mind. I was looking for... Oh, there it is. Egyptian's long. Okay. You most likely had a third great-grandparent. So, a great-great-great-grandparent. Or a great-great-great-great-grandparent. Or fifth, or sixth, or seventh. Okay. Or greater grandparent who was 100% Egyptian. This person was likely born between 1730 and 1850. Which is quite a leeway of time, considering that's 120 years. Here's the fun one. Health predisposition. I'm a little worried about that one. Slightly. Apparently, if you are European, or especially British, this is pretty much everywhere. If you're European, late onset Alzheimer's disease, kind of probably a thing in your genetics, which is... Kinda of sucks, uh, they have all sorts of suggestions on how to stop it, like it's be healthy, you know, eat good food, be active, and be mentally active, which I think I very much am. I live my life like a Pikmin game, I have a million things on every day's to-do list to do a million things, you know, I live by to-do lists, I'm always working on something. If this does end up being my future, I'm sure someone will dig up this ancient old VOD somewhere and be like, wow, look. There he is, at the youthful age of 24, talking about his demise. Fun. Also, I have a more, less, a more than slightly increased likelihood for type 2 diabetes, which doesn't surprise me. That is a thing in the family. Again, though, they're fi they, they say you're fine. You know, don't eat too much sugar. Be healthy. Most of these come to be healthy. And then these two are things that I don't have an increased risk of, but something or other is just, yeah, it's just a thing I own, I guess. I'm a carrier, maybe? Or I, I can pass it on to children. Oh well. There's all sorts of other things that are probably a lot more scary that I could be worried about, like chronic kidney disease. But I'm fine. One day, this might update and be like, Oh, by the way, no, you have, you know, you have a hereditary thrombophilia. Right. Here's the next, oh, this is a very unappealing ta uh, tab. There's a million things you know you can control in your DNA. Kind of scary. Cystic fibrosis? I know a guy with that. Looks kind of scary. Well, it doesn't look it from the outside, but still, you know, what's hereditary fru fructose intolerant? Actually, okay, that one makes a lot of sense. But what's limb girdle muscular dystrophy type 2E? I've no idea. Do I want it? Probably not. Or even to carry it. Nijmegen breakage syndrome. Sounds like when you break your bones very easily. Possibly. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Chogren Larsen syndrome. Not a fan. Thankfully, None of these I have, especially Zellweger Syndrome Spectrum PEX1 related. There's a lot of th like I don't think I recognize any of these words properly. Hearing loss, sure. Maple syrup urine disease. Oh, that's a serious kidney problem I think that guy's got. Not a thing I need to deal with, which is very nice. I am a relatively healthy human being. I actually live quite a healthy, active life, as much as I joke about not being active, because everyone does. And I'm certainly not during quarantine and lockdowns, but I'm pretty healthy relatively. Don't have to worry about blooming. Now, we've kind of burnt through all of these tabs very quickly, but these last two really take up a lot of time, because this is where all of its predictions all come in all at once, which is interesting. Right, wellness. Oh, actually, this is quite short. It's the traits that are especially long, I remember. Basically, it predicts a bunch of things, and it's interesting because it got things fairly right. Alcohol flush reaction. I don't flush. My face doesn't do that. Didn't think it was a DNA thing, but apparently it was. There's the caffeine consumption. I'm likely to consume more, which I've only recently gotten into. Deep sleep's the next one that pops up. I'm unsure about that. I don't sleep too well, especially lately. I'm not sure. I used to be. I used to sleep really quickly, really deeply, but I feel like I wake up really easily now. So, eh. I am predisposed to weigh less than average, which is interesting. I do find it easy to maintain my weight. Like, I don't know, I just have a lot of metabolism in me. Can't wait for that to disappear underneath me and completely swipe me off my feet. That'll be fun. 
<laughs> Lactose intolerance? I'm likely intolerant. Not true. I could eat milk all day. Not a problem with me. Maybe, I think you get more intolerant as you age though, was a thing I read. So, one day, I have the muscle composition of elite power athletes. I don't know if that actually means I've got such good muscles that I should be an athlete. I think it's more, you're either an elite power athlete or a, an elite long-term athlete. If, if you can sprint or if you can run a marathon. Which is funny because I wanted to be a, uh, a sprinter when I was a kid. I really liked running fast. I was a real Sonic fan, basically. Um, saturated fat and weight, likely similar weight. I, I don't really know what that means. Normal. Um, and then sleep movement, likely more than average movement. Interesting. I wouldn't know this because I'm usually unconscious when I'm sleeping. In fact, I'm always unconscious when I'm sleeping. Traits is the really interesting one to me because this tells you a million things that I guess makes sense genetically, but some of them aren't. So back hair. Uh, I may have a lot of hair on my head right now because I haven't had a haircut in uh, nine months and I've grown a beard to look more older, but everything else about me, pretty bare. So, back hair. I have no or little back hair, and it predicted that correctly. Bold spot. There's an 87% chance I don't have a bold spot. That's pretty good, because I'm 24. I don't want a bold spot anytime soon. Uh, cheek dimples. 58% chance you do not have dimples. Uh, you wouldn't even be able to see them anyway. My, my moustache blocks it the way, but I don't think I do. Uh, cleft chin. I do not have... Again, you can't see it. I've perfectly hidden it to hide the fact that I don't have a very well-defined chin. But I don't have a cleft chin either. 83% chance you have detached earlobes. I do. You know what detached earlobes are? You can either have a little piece of skin underneath that just sort of exists to be pierced, I guess. Or you don't. Early hair loss. I'm a big fan of this. 74% chance you will not experience hair loss or thinning before age 40. That's fantastic. I get to keep my wonderful locks of hair. Maybe not the mullet that I've got going on at the moment. Eye colour, they got wrong, because I guess uh, statistics don't go in my favour here. I have a 52% chance of blue eyes, which is nice. I like blue eyes. They're, I think they're very pretty. But not what I got. I have a 21% chance of greenish blue eyes. That, I think, is the one that I've got. Or it could be chance of 70% chance of green eyes. My eyes change colour in the sun. I think they go blue in the sun or something. I don't know. Finger length ratio. 77% chance your ring finger is longer than your index finger. Yeah, looks about right to me. Freckles. 63% chance you have few, if any, freckles. That's that's pretty good on me. I None. Hair texture. This one's interesting. 42% chance slightly wavy hair. That's me to a T. It's going curly, which is really fun because my mum has loose curly hair and my nan has tight curly hair and my uncle before he shaved it all, also had fairly tight curly hair. It seems over the generations we're becoming looser and looser. So now I'm wavy, but since not uh, getting a haircut, it's curling. If you look at any old videos of me in green screens this year, it's curling in all sorts of directions. So there you are. Light or dark hair? 52% chance of dark brown hair? That's me. 39% chance of light beige skin? Yeah, I think that's me. I always call it Italian skin tone. You're not going to get to tell now because of the neon lighting, but there it is. Unibrow. I have a little bit of a unibrow. Not true. Don't look at it. It's actually not true. And I do not have a widow's peak. And that's the end of our traits. Oh, I've got a few more though. Taste and smell. Asparagus odour detection. I can smell. There's a one in four chance you can smell it, so I can. I threaded the needle there. I likely can taste bitter. Yeah, I like it. Sure. Uh, a slightly higher odds of disliking cilantro. Never had it and definitely more likely to prefer chocolate over vanilla ice cream. I love chocolate on everything. If I get to choose a chocolate ice cream flavor with three different scoops, I go chocolate, chocolate, and chocolate. I just, uh, vanilla, not my thing. Banana, no thank you. Oreo mint, no. Chocolate all the way. And then prefer salty over sweet, yes, which I imagine is probably good for my diabetes type two predisposition. Final thing, the weird and the wonderful. I have the ability to match musical pitch. Yeah, I can do that. Fear of heights. Uh, less likely to be afraid of heights. Yeah, I'm already, not really bothered. Fear of public speaking is interesting. About a 50-50 chance of having a fear of public speaking. I did get stage fright pretty badly as a kid. And then just the act of being forced to do theatre shows kicked it out of me. And 
YouTube's helped too, I think. Um, maybe in my first video I seemed a little worried and scared, but I got over it pretty quick. So I've had a real story arc flipping that character trait. But if I had to actually stand in front of like a, a convention booth or uh, actually stand at a stadium like a, I don't know, a politician at a pedestal, maybe that would scare me. I'll have to find out. See if uh, that experience will make me shiver in my boots. Probably. Seems pretty intimidating. Hair thickness, less likely to have thick hair, also wrong. I have very thick hair. Uh, and then motion sickness, less likely to experience motion sickness. I did as a kid and don't anymore. I probably will again when I get a VR headset, but that's a thing for the future me to deal with. And then wake up time, likely to wake up around 8.30. I kind of do, kind of don't. I don't know, I haven't, sl I haven't woken up on my own terms in a long time. But with that, that is everything there is to see about me and my character traits. That is my DNA results. I thought it was really interesting to see. That's that. That's all of my traits. I'm 60 something percent British, 2% Egyptian, I think 2% Nigerian. I have a history in Italy and then everywhere else. And hopefully when my family members do these tests, if they ever do, I'll find out more. But I won't tell you that because you don't need to know about my nuns. The, the information some scientists got from a nan spit. That's something for me to know and you to just imagine.